Really high input delay is a nightmare for online gaming. Obviously, nothing you do in games happens instantly. There are microsecond delays between the time you press a button and the time you see anything happen on screen. So the best way that you can improve your game is to reduce the amount of delay that you have as much as possible. This will help you to perform better and have a more responsive and snappy experience overall. So let's get into it. What's up everyone, my name is Lethal and in today's video I'm going to help you to drastically reduce input delay on PC. There are seemingly endless amounts of tweaks that you can do to actually optimize your computer for gaming. For now, I'm going to keep it simple. Here quickly are some very powerful tips that are quite easy to set up. Number 1. Use full screen mode. There is an instant noticeable difference between using full screen mode over windowed or windowed full screen. The average input delay from using full screen is definitely lower than the other two options. However, it does come with some drawbacks. When using full screen mode, it can be very annoying to tab out of your game to use other applications or to utilize a second screen. This is where you have to weigh your pros and cons. Windows full screen is much faster for switching between applications, but full screen is going to give you the best responsiveness and snappy feel to your game that you might need if you're competing or even just playing online multiplayer matches for fun. The input delay for full screen is about 40 milliseconds. Meanwhile, windowed full screen comes in at around 65 milliseconds. This might not seem like much, but honestly, every little bit counts. Number two, lower graphic settings. High quality graphic settings are another thing that will simultaneously increase your input delay and lower your frames per second. Unfortunately, lowering your graphic settings will in most cases reduce how good your game looks by quite a bit. Is it the textures, shadows, and effects that you really want, or is it higher frames per second? There is a good middle ground depending on your preference, but the best competitive settings involve turning shadows either completely off or to the lowest possible setting, and lowering or disabling anti-aliasing. If you're a content creator or streamer, it might benefit your viewers to have a better looking game, although I think they'd rather have good gameplay in my opinion. Number 3. Disable VSync. VSync or Vertical Sync is a software that is designed to eliminate screen tearing. Screen tearing occurs when partial frames are rendered at the same time on your screen. To make it simple, when you have screen tearing, it will look like the image on screen is torn in pieces while you're turning your camera angle around. What VSync does is synchronize your GPU with your monitor or display. By doing this, the frames you see on screen will be whole and unbroken. Sadly, VSync also can give you serious input lag in your games. Honestly, it's just best to disable it entirely. VSync can add as much as 50 milliseconds of delay on top of the delay you already have with your monitor. You may also want to consider disabling FreeSync, Adaptive Sync, G Sync, or any other VSync related options. If you have an AMD GPU, you're going to need AMD Radeon Adrenaline software. I'll have a download link in the description. Once you have it installed and open, go to the top right and click on the gear icon. Then go to the graphics tab. Look for the Radeon Enhanced Sync option and make sure that you disable it. For NVIDIA GPUs, you will need the NVIDIA Control Panel. The download link will also be below. Open the NVIDIA Control Panel, then click on Manage 3D Settings. Then under Global Settings, go down to Monitor Technology and click on the Custom option and select Fix Refresh. Then click Apply. No restart is required for this change. Number 4. Use a Custom Timer Resolution App. A custom timer resolution will allow you to have a faster response time to inputs in your games. I won't go into an insane amount of detail, but the default timer resolution in Windows is about 1.000 or the equivalent of 10 milliseconds. With the custom timer resolution, you can pretty much cut that number in half down to 0.500. I'll leave a download link in the description where you can go to download the custom timer resolution app. Using this is pretty straightforward. Once you download it, open the file location, and if you don't mind, drag it onto your desktop for easy access or just pin it to the taskbar. You also have the option of running the program as administrator to avoid any permission or compatibility issues. Once you open it, you'll see what the current system timer resolution is. Next, you're going to click on Maximum. It should go from 1.000 to 0 0.500. Whenever you're about to game, simply open up the custom timer resolution app, click on maximum and enjoy faster response times. But make sure to minimize the program instead of closing it out to keep it running during your game. Number 5. Use a custom FPS cap. Depending on the frames per second that your hardware is able to reach, you may benefit from capping your FPS. Capping your FPS has many benefits including reducing the amount of heat and giving you more consistent input response times. The higher your FPS, the less delay you will have. 
For this reason, some people just leave their frame rate uncapped. While this technically will give you a lower average input delay, it will work your system a lot harder than it probably needs to be worked. If your frames per second aren't stable and they fluctuate wildly, you can experience sudden bursts of input delay or stuttering. This can make the game feel really bad and give you a terrible experience in intense situations. So this is a good reason to cap your frames per second. The best way to do this is going to either be in your GPU software or by using a program like RevaTuner Statistics Server. For this video, I'm going to show you how to cap your FPS in the GPU software. If you have an AMD GPU, you're going to need AMD Radeon Adrenaline software. Once you have it open, go to the top right and click on the gear icon. Then on the top left, click on the graphics tab. Then go down to the advanced section. The first option will be frame rate target control. Enable this option. Now you can set your custom frame limit or FPS cap. For NVIDIA GPUs, open the NVIDIA control panel. Next, click on Manage 3D Settings. Under the Global Settings tab, scroll down to Max Frame Rate. Click on it where it says Off and then select On to enable it. Now you can use a custom FPS cap with your NVIDIA GPU. So what number should you use? Here's how you're going to find out. Now the refresh rate of your monitor is going to matter a lot. This will basically determine what FPS cap you need to use, if your computer can produce the equivalent frames to match. If you have a 240Hz monitor and you can hit 240 frames, you should cap your FPS at 240, right? Or if you have a 144Hz monitor, you should cap your FPS at 144, or 120 and so on and so forth. But while this is a good start, there's a much better solution. You're going to use a custom FPS cap of 3 frames below your monitor refresh rate. So for a 240Hz monitor, cap your FPS to 237. For 144Hz monitors, cap your frames at 141, 117 for 120Hz, and so on and so forth. This is because many displays don't have an exact number refresh rate. Mine, for instance, is 239.98. So capping my game at 240 could technically cause some input delay. Number 6. Enable Radeon Anti-Lag or NVIDIA Low Latency. Last but not least, AMD and NVIDIA both have low latency modes to provide you with faster response times when rendering frames in your game. The way that frame rendering works is that the CPU produces the data that is then sent to your GPU in order to render the frames. With AMD Radeon Anti-Lag, you can reduce the input delay by a full frame by preventing the CPU from getting too far ahead of the GPU. The same is pretty much true for NVIDIA Low Latency. In the AMD software, click on the gear icon, then go to the Graphics tab. The first option is the Radeon Anti-Lag. Enable it and that's pretty much it. For NVIDIA users, open the NVIDIA control panel and click on Manage 3D Settings. Go down to Low Latency Mode and click on to where it says On or Off and select Ultra. Now you can enjoy less input delay in all of your games. If you find that you have problems with the Ultra setting, simply go back and change it to just On. So that's going to be all for this video, I hope this helped you in some way. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel to get notifications for any future content. Hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time.